if, if for instance, just the meeting room is going to be used in the evening, you can turn uh, other spaces down and, and just leave that meeting room as, as you know, being designated a hot area. So that, that's part of the, the whole design development is, uh, you know, sitting down and, and uh, saying, okay, what, what can we afford within this budget? Um, and, you know, one of the things that we and the architects <coughs> really, really agree on is the worst thing in the world is to give you a lousy mechanical system because you'll remember us very poorly <laughs> when you're cold or too hot. So uh, we try to spend a lot of time doing that. And it's the same thing with, you know, uh, good lighting. Uh, and they like to put really fancy lighting in sometimes. And we all say, hey, can't afford that one. But uh, good LED lighting, uh, you'll appreciate it because it makes significant impact on your electrical bills. So things like that, we think it's good to spend money on. Who, who is next? I, I, I just wanted to respond to your comment, Max. Libraries are changing. Libraries have changed. Um, what? we have now are totally different than just 30 years ago. Um, they have become a community center for towns. They've become the living room, more or less, which is why the need for large rooms are required. Um, we, we do not have um, lots of little rooms anymore. We more try to create environments <coughs> that, are, that are open and flexible and convertible for the changes that we <coughs> see down the road. But um, as Andre alluded to, our, our past successes with new libraries, um, the, the collections have <coughs> increased, the uh, attendance and use of the library have increased significantly. And, and more uh, families are utilizing them. So uh, having a new space that is more of a community living room uh, is, is the trend. With computers, with technology, with PowerPoint, uh, you know, set up so that you can, so anybody can use the environment. So that's how it's changing and we only see it going further that, that way. So. Yes, ma'am. Anthony just touched a bit on my question. Are we planning a media center within the library? I believe so, Christy. Some some place where they can take out videos and CDs and things like well, that. No, that I mean, no, I mean, no. Well, we've I talked about a smart center? wall in the meeting room, center. not just a TV, but a whole smart wall. We've talked about that. Right. Um, um, we definitely need space for makers. Um, for what? Materials, maker space. People, if you don't know about makerspace, no. no, this is a big thing now. <laughs> yeah, for new libraries, um, we mostly need space for people, people to come and work, people to come and build things, people to come. You know, we've had a 3D printer here, um, which we can get on a regular basis, maybe even end up with one. Um, as Anthony said, libraries are changing. We're doing our best to keep up. Um, can I follow up? I'm sorry. Sure. <coughs> When I said media center, I meant are we going to have an area where there are several computers and, oh, yes. and terminals? And, and does that mean we have to purchase a lot more equipment? No. Okay. That was my question. In a lot of cases, people just appreciate being able to plug their laptops. Lots of people bring their own yeah. now, which yeah. is why we need more space. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just wanted to say, being involved in a number of organizations, we can't meet here. The space is too small, and I know I think it's the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or into you know groups such as that don't have places to go in Tufton Girl. So to have a little more room is really going to be a plus, and to have the audiovisual equipment. I mean, even for me, the number of times I want to give a presentation, I think well, I can do it at the hospital, or I can you know, do it at the Wolfboro Library, but to have it in my hometown is going to be really exciting. Yep. You're, you're right, that, uh, that seems to be a very, very popular thing with libraries, is, is to have places together. Yes, sir? You flashed a number of 210 square foot. How did you get that? The, uh, I looked at what uh, it was gonna cost for renovating, uh, existing spaces in the new space uh, compared to what uh, uh, typical average libraries, you know, which would come in 
at 250, 255. So. But at 19 for what we're doing, it's significantly mm -hmm. higher than that, correct? Well, I'm talking just construction costs. Yeah. Yeah. I only talk okay. construction. I'm just, if you're going to run around with 210 per square foot, I think it's immediately going to get calculated to be significantly more because it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I apologize. I, uh, when I talk numbers, it's strictly <coughs> from my world, which is construction. And, and that's what I understand is because I, I'm working with another town right now, and um, I just calculated their library is going to be $330 a square foot. And they said, oh my god, why? And I had to do a long dissertation about Well, that's the total cost. Right? No, that was just construction Just costs. construction, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, because so, you had a, so whole, wasn't one of our a whole library. list of your <laughs> other other costs <laughs> that were involved just to, and construction was only a portion of it. Right. You know, if you look at, uh, and they're very variable, uh, for instance, construction. Would you put that slide back up that shows your construction, your, your, your total one million nine and how that was, a, uh, it came up with construction and then uh, that, that'll show you, you the various, there's there? engineering no. costs, there's all <laughs> kinds of things. Well, I know, but that, that just was just a number. It's just, just an observation. Mm -hmm. If we're being asked to put one nine, yeah. and someone stands up and says the construction costs are 210, <coughs> I don't think that's going to play well if it's really the total cost. Right. So if, if you're only going to talk construction costs, fine, as long as it's defined. Right. And you're going to toss in all the other stuff, which may or may not be your your bag, but you're not going to not going to sell it in 210 if it's really. It, no, I I was just trying to give some comparisons on. By the way, 210 sounds great. Let's what, go. What we are saving, <laughs> you know, based on if you if you look at we got to build a new library across the street. Today's dollars, you know, be 250 plus. As opposed to coming in here, and again, 250 is just for construction. As opposed to staying here and renovating it, it gets you down uh, to a savings of about forty dollars a square foot. That's what the point I was trying to make. And all I'm saying is, it's going to draw more questions if either the forget I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't say it again. <laughs> if you take your total of a million nine. 19 and you divide it by the the, the total the total square footage of the, of, of, the, of the old construction and the new construction you'll get your square foot construction right. cost and that takes into consideration all the fees the contingency yeah, right the there. furniture and everything your else testing that, services yeah. your surveys your goods uh, it, it, the list is right in front of you yeah well that's it's, it's a different it's a different It's number. a different spin. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're including the old space with the new. Right. And I, I guess as long as you're ready to answer the question about, really? It's only 210? Okay. That's why we, on this side of the table, try not to talk about square footages because it's so blurry. and But it's so easy for people to just say, okay, that's a 10,000 square feet. It's $200 a square foot. That's math they can do. Um, but it's not that easy in the whole realm of it all. So, um. At this point, I think I'd like to ask Jack Whitmer to uh, just discuss a little bit of dollars and numbers and how it might affect us. Um, I, I've gone out to three different banks. Uh, we did uh, for um, Mer Meredith Miller Savings Bank, Northway Bank, and TD Bank to get some rates. Um, I asked for <coughs> quotes on 1.1 million to borrow. The rest of the money would come from the town funds that are already there, uh, plus the funds fundraising that the uh, trustees have done. And um, I, I asked for five, seven, and ten year financing. Uh, it's a relatively small amount of money uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, Northway Bank came back with uh, rates of 2.3, 2.5, and 2.75 percent uh, based on uh, the, the, short, the, the small amount of money in the short terms. Um, obviously, the 2.3 percent is for five years. The 2.75 is for the 10 years. Um, the, uh, the quotes from uh, TD Bank were 3.25, 3.50, and 3.75, so a point higher. 
uh, and Merrill Village was just a little bit higher than that. Um, Northway Bank, as you, re you might remember, we used to finance the fire department, <coughs> the fire station. Um, great bank to work with. Uh, there's a <coughs> repayment penalty should there be uh, a time where we wanted to uh, uh, pay a little bit more principal or whatever. There's no penalties involved. And the entire bank origination fee, uh, closing costs and all, is $350. So uh, Northway Bank certainly is the, uh, would be my preferred choice, obviously, if we're going to go with uh, one of the local banks. Uh, the other question that came up was, uh, well, how about the uh, bond bank? because uh, the bond bank is out there. Uh, the problem with dealing with the bond bank is there's a lot of upfront uh, application fees, uh, thousands of dollars for application fees. Uh, they only sell their bonds in July and December, and they can't tell you what the rate is today. Uh, they won't know that until they actually sell the bonds in July, uh, and that money is not available until July. Uh, the other thing is with the bond bank, you have to take all that money at once so when you sign the paperwork, they send you a check for the million one, and you start paying interest on that day. Uh, with Northway Bank, we can draw this money down until it's gone, and then start the amortization from there. So uh, Northway Bank, or any one of the local banks, is, is uh, uh, a better option. The Northway Bank certainly seems to be the, the better option. Uh, in looking at a, between five and 10 years, you're looking at adding uh, I'm, I'm, I've done some rough calculations of two and a half to four cents to the tax rate. So that's what this project is going to wind up costing. Um, well obviously a little bit, a uh, little less up front if we go ten years, but uh, five years obviously is a pretty, uh, pretty short term, and we can get this thing paid off fairly quickly that way. So, yeah. But whose decision is it? Which? option to use? The, it's up to the selectmen to decide um, not only what bank to go with and also the terms of the loan. So, but they, don't, they won't make that decision until uh, it's actually approved at town meeting. Uh, but once it's approved, then they can go back. Uh, my recommendation would be uh, for the selectmen probably within the next three weeks maybe to lock in a rate. Uh, the 2.3 was quoted last month. Um, I don't think, I, I wouldn't expect it to change a whole lot, uh, but they couldn't give me a lock rate until it's actually approved at town meeting. Uh, but they can lock it in a week or two before town meeting, and then if it's, if it's approved, that's the rate that's locked in going forward. And Jeff, with the, with the bond, there's no um, early payoff possible. Right, with the, with the bond, if you go to the bond bank, once you get that money, if you take it for 10 years, you have to pay it off in 10 years. There's no option for you to pay it off early, um, which I, I think is, is something that uh, we did that with when we bought the gold property. Uh, we also financed that through Northway Bank, uh, and town finances allowed the selectmen to pay that off a year early, so we saved some interest money there. So having the option to be able to pay it off or pay down a little more interest if you want any given year, you can certainly do that. Jack, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. You say it was for the Northway Bank at five uh, for ten years, it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Yes. So my taxes uh, for a house that that'd be five dollars for a house that would right, assess right. the two hundred thousand. Right. Right. Five dollars. Five dollars a year. Correct. Five dollars a year. Right. If your house is valued at two hundred fifty yeah, thousand, so if your house, house is valued at less, five, five dollars a year. Well, you can just see it that way. Mm. At two and a half cent, two and a half cents per per thousand. thousand. Okay. So uh, I mean, it's a it's a it's a bargain. It really is, and, and this is the right time to do it. Construction costs are only going to go up, um, and uh, I think it's a it's a right uh, it's a right it's a right time to do it. Mm. Uh, Jack, you mentioned. Um, uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that, uh, you know, I think uh, interest rates are going to be pretty volatile yeah. in the next 60-day uh, period. Uh, is there any way that we could take some steps uh, without violating, um, uh, you know, town rules <coughs> to uh, lock ourselves in with the bank? You mentioned something to the effect that the uh, closing costs were very minimal. Yeah, the closing and, costs, yeah. I mean, could we could we do an application that is uh, for the $350 and just you can, get yeah, ourselves you, you locked can, in? Northway Bank will allow us to call, uh, our town meeting is the 14th yeah. of, of March, 
Uh, so after next Wednesday, uh, which is the 14th or Tuesday, whatever it is. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. Don't forget, <laughs> Don't forget Jack. Don't forget Jack. It's Valentine's <laughs> Day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, really, with the, within a 30-day window, they'll lock us in with a 30-day guarantee. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, you're, you're right. I think after sometime at the end of next week, if the selectmen wanted to, to pick Northway Bank and pick a, pick a you know, time frame, not... Again, they can't do anything legal, legal exactly. until it's past yeah. the town meeting. Right. But yeah. they can certainly send the application in. Yeah. If it's not not approved at town meeting, then the application goes away and nothing sure. happens. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But you're absolutely right. I think if the, yeah. the sooner we can lock it in, the better off we are. Yeah. Okay. Jack, you're in touch with the what's going on with schools and other things as well. Yeah. There's this big gorilla sitting behind me in this closet in the form of a house bill to reinstate a form of donor towns. Should the get that go through? Do you have any idea what the impact would be on Tufton Borough? Well, if you're, if you're talking about the one that, uh, well, there's, there's a couple of them, and I think um, uh, the, the one bill that was just killed in, uh, in the in committee mm -hmm. uh, was to change the funding formula for all cooperative town, uh, cooperative school districts. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have raised our school portion by a little over $3.3 .3 million. But that was and, killed. And our cost per, yeah, our cost per student would have gone up to yeah. about $35,000 per student. <coughs> uh, that was killed in committee 19 to nothing. All right. <laughs> so, so that was a good hey. Thank you very much. That's been I, 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 another one, though. But, but I, I will, will say that, that that particular bill was was co-sponsored, unfortunately, <laughs> by Lake Cordelli, who's yes. our, our rep. Well, uh, uh, which we have spoken I have, to, I have to say that he, he did initially <laughs> Yeah. I know. He read the text and he he withdrew his yeah, support I know. and he voted against it. Yeah, and he couldn't. He was he's on the off. committee. He yeah. voted against it. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, my my feeling about that is, and, and not to get into an argument about it, but my feeling is, you don't put your name on a bill unless you know what you're putting your name on. For. Well, that's certainly a you know, but the but fact there, is that he voted against it. But there are there are a whole bunch of other bills out there. The what? state continues to take money from the school districts uh, for, for the state's benefit. Uh, that's a battle that we have at the school district all the time. Right. Uh, the state used to pay 35% of the retirement cost. Now the state pays zero. Uh, you, uh, you, everyone here in this room is paying for that. Uh, the state's taking that money away. They're also taking 4.4% of our stabilization money every year for the next 10 years or 15 years. Um, Again, I think last year it was only $170,000 in the grand scheme of things, not a lot, but everyone in this room is paying a piece of that. Right. Uh, and there's additional uh, money for uh, the, the bill that's out there for uh, uh, school choice. Uh, whether you're for or against school choice, uh, that's money that would come out of our school district uh, paying for people who go to private schools and all that. It's, that's your, you know, it's still out there. It hasn't been voted. Yet. Well, I'm always concerned about the amount of money, you know, separate that we have to pay that isn't totally under the, uh, the selectmen's or the voters' right. control, right. per se. Right. That big one was, was really concerning to me. It really, it really was. Yeah, but guy, yeah. there isn't, there is another bill that you, you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's the stabilization. Yep, stabilization yeah. grant, uh, yeah. and the, the state uh, gives stabilization grant to to offset the the demographics in different communities and all that. Mm -hmm. And the state now is taking four percent of that away from all school districts over the next you know, twenty years or whatever it is. Um, so the state continues to take more and more money away. So, sure. but I think getting away from the school district uh, business, you know, this is a this is a bargain. I think for interest rates. Um, I think we, we've got to we got to do it now. Get this done, uh, and at a 2.3 or 2.75 percent interest rate, I don't think we can go wrong. Couldn't argue with that interest rate. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. so, and plus the plus the fees. Uh, the other banks that I talked to, um, now, granted, all these closing costs are not that expensive, but 350 for Northway Bank, uh, Meredith Village, they said was probably seven five seventy seven fifty eight hundred dollars. Uh, TD Bank is about the same. So Northway Bank is certainly uh, a friend of the municipalities that they did at this point. Mm. Interesting. Thanks. Well, very interesting meeting. A lot of good points being made by everybody from all concerned. Uh, the trustees will uh, deal with addressing uh, some of the questions that came up this morning. Uh, we'll start on that first of the week, and I'd like to also take the time to thank uh, folks from SMP and Mount Bear for taking time out of their Saturday mornings 
uh, to come down and give us an education. We're going to have two more of these uh, as we get closer to town meeting. Uh, they will be run by the trustees, so the information will be hopefully the same. Obviously, probably not presented nearly as well because this is what they do far better than what we do, but we will have an opportunity for other people to come and hear about it. And with that, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.